Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for not Monday, as I was just going to say, but it is Tuesday, and it is Tuesday the 16th. So um, first trading day of the week after a three-day weekend, and you can kind of tell what type of day it was. Well, maybe a little bit. Uh, we'll go over all the movers of the day. And uh, of course, first disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going through is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. Please read the full risk disclaimer there. But even though we are out, you know, off for three days, right? Three day weekend. Um, it seems like a lot of the, the um, trends are still um, in place, you know, maybe a couple of new things, which we'll go over. But um, what do I mean by that? Well, it's been pretty nasty um, breath um, since we started this year. It actually started a couple of days before the um, the end of 2000, uh, the uh, the start of 2024. So, you know, we've got a trend of just um, ugly looking breath and I won't show it here because we talk a lot about it in the weekend video where um, we talk about the NICE um, McClellan Os um, summation index, which has been trending lower. Um, over that time is just proof to see, you know, what's been going on here. But, you know, you could look at this on a day to day basis and you could see there's just a lot more red. Um, you know, when you get to this area of my spreadsheet, right, where you're looking at, um, I have this sorted, of course, by percentage change from open so I can see what names are, uh, you know, what how names are moving over the trading session. And then, of course, this. Um, and I've got, you know, anything highlighted that's down more than 1%. So we've got really thin or narrow breath um, and a lot of areas um, interesting that, that are starting to break down too. Um, for example, you know, a couple things, you know, I, I haven't looked at this chart too often, but I've just noticed that PBW, which is a clean energy ETF, um, has been on the the um, names that have been or the groups that have been underperforming quite a bit and you can see like the, <laughs> this has really had not much of a bounce um towards the end of last year uh but just just um you know just that a, a bounce right no trend change or anything like that and that is con that is taking out the lows from uh from last year so it continues to trend lower right and then another group which I, it seems like people get excited about this like emerging certain types of emerging markets. It seems like every January um, people come in and think, Oh my God, it's going to be the year of China or it's going to be the, you know, the year of, you know, something else internationally. But, you know, I think this is just proof to tell you stay away from things. In my opinion, anyway, I don't trade downtrends. I learned very early uh, in my trading career that do not trade things below the 200 day moving average. They also continue, they often continue to go in that direction, right? Um, so that's classic trend trading, right? They get, they go down, they, they break down below the 200 day moving average. Um, you know, newer traders um, or some people may who have maybe a 40 year time horizon, um, I'm joking a little bit, think that that's a good buy because it's going lower and it's cheap. Um, not if you're trading, you know, 90% of the time, um, you know, not if you're trading, you know, if you don't have a 40 year time horizon, um, <laughs> um, like I'm just throwing 40 years out there to be funny, but, um, but yeah, this continues to trend lower. Right. And, you know, you have to think about the opportunity cost too. I'm just going to spend a minute here because, um, the, again, there's more things going down than there's going up, but I have to think about the opportunity cost, you know, while you're, while you're thinking that this is a good buy, because I've, I've heard it a lot, um, from people, same thing with, oh my God, Alibaba, the valuation is great. Okay. But it's also in China, right? Which is not the same type of political system. <laughs> That's so you got, you can't just say, oh my God, it looks, the balance sheet looks great in, in Alibaba. It's also a different political, completely political system and they'll control what you do, whether you, whether you like it or, or not. But this is another one. There's no reason to touch this stuff, right? If they're so great, then, then they at least can get over their 200 day moving average. What did I, did I put something wrong in here? Why is this? Maybe the, the maybe it doesn't even want to show me this. But this is also breaking, right? Again, maybe maybe it could form a little bit of a of a double bottom if it holds in here. But you need to see confirmation first. But same thing, people don't like people who are buying downtrends, right? They don't like to wait for any confirmation, right? So I could say that maybe maybe this is a double bottom, right? And and might bounce, but um, you always want to wait for that confirmation because if not, it's trending down, right? And um, there's a lot of and if you don't believe me, right? This is another one that I heard in the beginning of the year. Oh my God, this neo is a 
great setup, right? Well, this is taking out multi-year lows too. This is a $6 stock. <laughs> so you know, And if you don't think that they can go to zero, they absolutely can go to zero. All right. So let me, let me get back on track. I just thought it was kind of interesting that, that there are, um, you know, groups that are just not looking good, not looking very good at all. Um, another one too, which was, do, was doing pretty well last year um, is, and you can see it hit that upside version point of control, which is metals and mining, right? And you've got a, in this ETF, it's, it's an equally weighted ETF. So you've got some steel names in there. You've got some gold miners. Um, you've got, a, you know, and then a bunch of other, you know, miners like copper miners and so forth. But this is, you know, for a while was hanging around, uh, reminds me a little bit of the chart of IWM. Uh, whoops. Let me just reset this. A lot of chart errors with me uh, in this video, um, but you know, notice that it kind of so it dipped right, and then a normal dip in an uptrend, it holds the two these two short term moving averages, and then it begins to move higher. What you don't want to see is it continue to move lower and uh, break that consolidation. That means something bigger is going on. Now it could get another test here, uh, you know, fifty day moving average, and maybe a gap fill here. But um, it's certainly not strong. Okay, so let's. I, I skipped the indices, um, but I think this chart is kind of um, what I'm seeing in a lot of charts right now that are showing more strength. Um, we're testing the the we're either testing or um, or getting close to those highs from either you know right at the end of last year. And also the top of the value area for January. So that's where we are here for S&P. Or if you want to look at SPY, it's kind of the same situation. This did make it a little bit over the, the highs of last year, but it hasn't been able to break out of the January value area. Qs, I think this is kind of funny um, for whatever reason, because I have a sick sense of humor I get. I'm just kidding. Um, but um, the Qs are exactly 0.0, .0 for the year. So even though they had a really good week, last week um they are right on the screws of flat for this year so if you know some people look at the performance of the queues and they kind of think about their portfolio and same you know or you could do the same thing with the spy which is also very you know very close to the performance in the queues just be you know so flat you know we'll call that flat so if you're up for the for this month you're doing a pretty good job right because then it gets worse as, as we go down down here so i'll cover the small caps next but um you know here's what look like so they're consolidating they have to make it through 41264 right and you know immediately we started lower so that's why um you know even though the nice performance last week it's just because we started the year on a you know a poor footing um moving lower but yeah for so we're going to have these tests of resistance <clears throat> and it's concerning to me that um you know, I think it, I think it will be harder to break out if we don't start to get some type of participation and just, you know, um, just really uh, thin areas of the market. So I don't think that that, you know, I think something will need to change, right? We're going to need to see more participation um, in this market. And, um, you know, I can kind of begin to kind of give show you a couple things. You know, I mentioned breadth, which we have an indicator for breadth that looks at every day. You know, like um, volume and advancing and declining names, but here's four week new highs versus new lows, right? This is the smallest list I think I've seen so far of the new highs. And look at the list today of new lows, right? The last day, <clears throat> I was basically off for most of the day on Friday, but I, I mentioned Thursday was a change of tone that we started to see more new, just barely more new four week lows than new highs. But now look at it, you got 148 names making new. Uh, four week low. again. This is not fifty two weeks, so I keep repeating it just so that you know. Um, and there's only forty here, so you know we're getting more things breaking down um, versus up, and and this is three to one to the downside. So this is not good. And you know if you're, um, you know trying to be patient here, I think that's good. Um, but ultimately things have to improve in, in the internals. Um, it's nice to see, you know, we're going to go to the next group in just a second before I, the last thing I'll cover is IWM, but look at IWM. It was kind of like that XME chart, right? It kind of, um, you know, we had this nice move at the end of the year. And so far this year, you've had some digestion and a couple of days it looked like, you know, even Friday looked like it might be able to turn the corner here, but notice it got rejected. And now it's, it's the, at the low point of, um, <clears throat> 
of this year or of this month, right? And if you look at that performance, you know, what is it at this point, right? For small caps, down down about 5%. I mean, that's, you know, remember, like, normal people, you know, normally people think of corrections as down 10%. I mean, you're halfway there for IWM. You got a, you got a um, uh, you know, half of a correction going on there um, in the small caps. Arc Innovation, look at that ETF. That, that ETF is down over 10%. I mean, that is a volatile um, group of stocks, but um, they are getting creamed. Um, so they've got a correction already. But again, I, I wouldn't really say, I don't know if 10% is a, a correction for Arc because that thing, um, you know, moves pretty decently. So the next group that I wanted to talk about, which is where, you know, you have the strength. And if you were an AM, just if your portfolio contained AMD and NVIDIA today, you weren't complaining, right? Those two stocks, you'd look at those, if you only look, looked at those two stocks today, you would say, wow, this market's on fire, right? But, um, but that's what's participating, right? And um, it's nice because those are two very popular names, right? People like to trade NVIDIA and AMD. So it's that's kind of masking, um, in my opinion, that there's a lot of weakness outside of, um, you know, what the semiconductors did today. So um, we'll talk about, a, you know, I will talk about some of these names, um, but I think that this is the chart of the day um, because I think this needs to break. Uh, 176.86. So I, I was talking about how this happened in a couple other software names today. Um, I'll go over that, but um, you know, got right to that top of value, and I wouldn't call that a rejection today. You know, because it's the first time. You know, today it was up. Uh, the semis were at 1.6 percent. Um, they did touch that uh, on the highs. You know, top of value. So I think that's going to be a great level to watch. But yeah. Um, you know, I've been long NVIDIA, um, so this works, you know, worked great for me. I'm not, not complaining about this at all. It's not the only thing that I own, unfortunately, because I, you know, on a day like this, you wish, oh, my God, I, I've got a, bit, a huge position in NVIDIA. I, I don't have a huge position. Um, and this was the other name that was really strong in this group. Um, you know, AMD um, just got off to a, a very fast start. And I looked at it and I said, well, that's a nice, real nice move. Um, this was on our weekend watch list. I just didn't get a chance to take it. Uh, but when I looked at it, you know, just shortly after the close, it was already up 5%. And, um, you know, I was like, I'm not, it was right here. I think like right in here. And I'm like, well, I'm not chasing this thing up 5%. And um, sometimes uh, they just continue to move higher, right? So very nice. Um Cadence is another one too, that if you look at where this closed <clears throat> for the month, right? So you're going to see this theme as I go through some of these stronger names, right? It goes right to the top of value. Bang. Um, so e very easy to watch going forward. Watch what happens at 277.83, right? A few other names, right? Arm, unfortunately, this is also a name that I, so I don't just own, uh, NVIDIA, I, like I said, I'm, now I'm making jokes a little bit, but I own this arm. You know, I thought this might be bad. So th it's still kind of an inside day, one, two, three, four, five. So this would be the place if it's going to hold, if not, um, you know, if holds this bar. But, um, you know, I sometimes I go into detail about option activity and what my opinion is. But I'll tell you, this thing has been acting great until it started to see option activity. So that's why I'm very cognizant. Um, and I'm also um, very objective when we see option. Op we've seen huge option activity in this name. Ever since we started to see option activity, the thing has gone down, right? If you are a new trader, right, you may think, I got to see option activity in a name. That is completely false. Some of the best names that I see that have really good trending performance, you know, like make make uh, news like this, uh, moves like this, don't see a lot of option activity, right? Um, it's better that the stock buyers are in this than the speculative speculative option activity. Again, speculative option activity is great for when there's something going on in a name. You know, when somebody's taken it, like an activist has taken a stake in a name, you'll often see that there's option activity before. But if you're looking for solid trending names, um, and, and this name has seen, seen a little bit of option activity on this move, but for the most part, um, a lot of times you, you, you don't need it. Um, you know, so it's like I said, and, and the last thing I'll say about that is it's 50, 50. It, it really is. Um, a lot of names that we see option activity uh, is aggressive swept bought. Um, it's not because they're doing something on the other side. It's just because the hedge funds are not always right. That's all. 
but um, there's plenty of cases where it does work too. So all I'm doing is just get, trying to give you perspective and something that I've learned, um, you know, over time. So, <clears throat> uh, so I mentioned cadence. Um, also another one too, which I don't own anymore is CAMT, which had a decent day that moved out of this range too. So that's a, a stronger performer. Broadcom had a good day too. Right. This is going to be hitting some of this resistance in here. So if you bought in here, um, you know, you might want to be trimming here. Notice that it took out this one at this V pocket. And I think I talked about this in you know a video at some point last week saying that could be a great upside target. Um, notice that got taken out. The cyber names, even though they weren't big performers for the day, crowd strike for the week. I would watch 287 69. Right, this thing's holding very strong. Um, you know, got a little bit extended away from itself, but still holding the five-day moving average. Um, ESTC is the one that I played today. This was in our watch list. Right, here's what um, the watch list that I compile uh, every weekend, and then we kind of add to it. Even though I didn't add any names, but um, this is a bit all over the place. In the beginning of the day, we we had a lot more names that you know the triggers are based on the market webs um, value areas, so that's why they're not they don't reflect the the actual performance. Sometimes the trigger is just a little bit higher based on what the value area looks like. Um, but, um, you know, these were the names that were performing. So I did take the ESTC. Um, I did take ST. So again, same thing with like the cadence and the semis and the, the S and P and the Qs. It's got to get through this resistance here at 116.77. All right. So that's, um, important. Um, what else did I want to go over? Um, where I saw some strength too, uh, you know, I can go over three or four other uh, uh, cyber names, but I'm going to move on a little bit. Where I saw a lot of strength on Friday was in was in a lot of IT names. I don't know if that was because of um, Infosys, which had good earnings, but you know that's what that's how they classify IBM is IT services. Um, and look at this break higher. Right. Not much hesitation through that value area. Um, another one too to I think to watch is ACN, which had a um inside date today, right? Um EPAM was was another one that went um that had that had a um big move on Friday. Too much of a move down, I would say, today. I would have liked to see it hold that top of value, 30285, but you can continue to pay attention to it. Um, another one too, which is just software, which is workday. Um, this had an inside day based on that candle, um, the body of the candle inside this one, right? So that's another one that I'm watching. Um, a new one, uh, which is uh, Parsons, is this PSN? Right. Not a good, uh, not a good looking candle. I did not get involved in this one today. It got a, uh, a broker's upgrade this morning, but I don't like to see that type of price action. I was watching to see, I, I had an alert, um, you know, once it kind of broke in here, I had an alert like right around um, this 6560 to see if it was going to retake this, but it didn't. So no position, um, you know, no need to do anything at this point. And I'll watch to see if buyers come in. But again, you don't want to see a name go up like that, in my opinion. And um, just sellers kind of really take um, take control of it. What else? Oh, STNE. I tried this. I I did not hang on to this just because I'm using you know what I'm seeing. You know what I talk about daily um, in these videos and and what the internals are doing. Um, if a name isn't acting exactly how I want it to, I get very picky and I take the, the name off. So I wanted to see this close above 1779, just like some of those other examples. It didn't do it. And I would rather be sitting with less positions um, than more as we're doing this. Um, and I can't believe I've, I haven't mentioned what the dollar did today. If you go to the themes here, right, big dollar strength today, you know, more than usual. Here's what the dollar. So for a while we were trading in this range, right? And we we broke higher. So that's a bit of a scary candle, I think, in the dollar. Don't want to see that. Um, also, don't want to see what TLT did today, which was down 1.7 percent, right? Um, so of course the opposite of this is interest rates. So it's when TLT goes down, um, that means interest rates are going higher, right? It's just how a bond works. But if you look at this one-hour chart, right? Uh, Notice last week, right? There's a few times that this thing tried to break higher. Bonds try to turn the corner. There's sellers in here every single time, right at the bottom of the value area for the week. Again, giving you a heads up that there was no strength 
there and um, sellers were, were in control every time it tried to bounce. So where is this going to now? Well, I, I don't have the answer for you. Um, I think it's going to have to hold this, uh, see if it holds this bottom of value tomorrow. Um, there's also the 50-day moving average, but this is not a, get, a good look for stocks. And keep in mind, you know, we have been seeing things like VIX call buying. Um, we have been seeing things like uh, um, put buying in XLK, right? The tech ETF It's another name. Um, this team's up. Uh, looks like they, they just came out with earnings here, or preliminary earnings, maybe. Oops. Uh, preliminary revenue above. Right. Speak. And there was one other. I knew that there was one other name, Rambus. But look at what Rambus did. Right. Hit that top of value and uh, rejection. So, um, you know that's why these things are very important to know where you're going to have some resistance in play. All right, a couple a couple last names to go over that I've got uh, written down here. Um, did I mention CTSH? I think I did. All right, this one also came a little bit too far in. That's also in the IT services uh, group. I was going to mention Uber because I know people, a lot of people are talking about Uber. Let's see if we can stay. So this one. Um, you could see on Friday, try to get through the top of value and couldn't really do it. Today, it is, right? It's a little bit of a struggle there, but watch that 63.22. And then um, I think Dash also, even though it didn't do much today, still, I think the chart looks pretty decent. Um, nice break higher. And then now you get the retest, right, in Dash. So I'm, I'm definitely watching both of those names. All right, guys, that is it uh, for um, the live stream. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, also, if you want to see our commentary on a daily basis, um, you could either sign up for our trading room. If you don't have the time to do that, then what I would suggest you do is go to our Substack page, right? And uh, you'll get these themes that I talk about in real time, ttgtrading.com, uh, right, right here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.